legendary and she's been doing her own workshop and she's a musician. They tour, they go all around the United States. Uh, my check. My check. My check. This legendary boy, who I'm proud to call my sister, has been doing this for many years. Y'all heard she got 45 years clean and so so she's about to come up here and cook this microphone. She's an author, she's a musician, she's a composer. Man, she's like a mama, she's a sister, she's all that. So please give her a round of applause to Abachi. Hopefully you can hear me. One of the things I want to say real fast before I get into any poetry, it's a really an honor. I toured for over 20 years in the penal system. I taught creative writing, music, and drama in the penal system, and a lot of the men and women are sitting in this room, and they're clean and sober, and looking good. You look yeah. beautiful. Everybody talks about those of us who go back out, and what have you, and get, you know, go out and come in, and go out and come in, and get dirty all over again. Ain't nobody talking about all the ones who are getting out and doing good. Give yourself a big hand. Robinson and Momo Santa Maria and Willie Bobo who hung out in West Oakland. 
They brought me to West Oakland and taught me just how special this place is. I mean, I belong to the Blues Society. We've done uh, forums down there. People who were born there talk about West Oakland ain't shit. It's never been shit. My mama ain't shit. My dad ain't shit. They know this, this place is so special. There was a time when people would jump ship just so they could party in West Oakland. In a three block radius, they had seven clubs. They had everybody from Sarah Vaughan, Billy Holiday, Roma Santamaria, every blues group to imagine. And they don't really realize just how special it is. So I want to take you there. This poem is in my book. I wrote a play based on this poem called Oak Town Blue. And we ran three, had three different runs. We we're trying to get funded to run again. When you hear about it, please come and support it. Yeah. It's also on our CD. I also have an eight piece band if you want to come and hear some not only nasty blues and Latin music and what have you. We the ones you got to see. So, anyways, I want to take you to West Oakland at its heyday and tear down and hopefully to build it back up because it's. As pretty as we are, I know we got to go back up. We cannot let these snakes take us over. <laughs> they came on foot by car ride, hope on horseback by train on the plane. They came wearing faith. Pockets full of dreams, running from cotton fields and chopping cane. They came running, knowing better was waiting, carrying their whole lives in paper bags, carrying guitars on their backs. Snacks full of tall tales and blue songs of a home they knew they'd always miss but swore they'd never go back to. They came by ship, discharged, scars, wounds no time could heal, released from military hospitals on West Coast shores. They'd never even seen battle fatigue, confused, feeling used, and they came in droves from the wars, shell shocked and tired, looking for a home, and when they didn't find it, they built it. Yeah. On any night in West Oakland, you might run into migrant workers straight out the cotton fields of Georgia, strutting their stuff and partying and bumping and grinding, alongside armies of ditch diggers, tradespeople, and unemployed PhDs who were never told they were unemployable. Saints and sinners from Texas and Mississippi, from Arkansas, Virginia, Maryland, the Carolinas, and even the West Indies all dancing away their rage. A rage and sadness hidden behind memories of clouds of cotton and buried beneath too many mountains of sugar cane and tobacco leaves of frustrated fury, gladly forgotten, left behind to rotten deserted plantation fields. And you could hear the relief in the clubs as Big Mama Ford took her crown and gave open everything. Everything woman gave us everything. Everything she wasn't allowed to give in the South. Johnny Hooker brought the boogie out the Delta, and Bob Giddens, uh, Ivory Joe Hunt, and Charles Brown gave us smooth. You can go right down the street, get yourself some of Beverly Stowall, Sonny Rose, Jimmy McCracken, and J.J. Malone, or the sophisticated sweetness of Jimmy Witherspoon, or the raw passion of L.C. Good Rock and Robinson's blues violin, or get your insides wrapped out and put back together again as Edda James and Sugar Pie DeSanto tore the roof off the house. Yeah. The blues did not just slip into the Bay Area, it was like a cloud burst. The blues came in waves, powerful waves, waves as subtle as a tidal wave and as painlessly as a pregnant woman in hard labor. The blues came in oversized, raggedy overalls, sometimes sporting evening gowns and three-piece suits. It came furious, luxurious, jubilant, overworked and underpaid, running from the clan, holding on to everything they had while others just looking for something to hold on to. The blues came west looking for freedom land. L.A., Sacramento, and San Francisco in that big city thing. Folks rocked in Russell City. But later I had seen, which made a kind of smooth, <coughs> shy town sound of thing. But if you wanted a gut mansion, soul take it, down home, you know, the, the kind of church in your mama go warned you about, the, the, the kind of blues that, that made your hair stand on and snatch you out of chairs and made you shout, jump at the act of fooling and screaming and, and that good old makes you want to holler kind of blues. Oh, kind of open. Yeah. Open. I say open, open the blues back of the West Coast. Seems as wild and sophisticated as you were. Every place a different personality, and every night was party night. And you could romance and grind and whine and cry about what you didn't have, or be brag and be loud and proud to show off everything you did have, and talk about everything you wanted to be. A Slim Jenkins Club, that's his orbits from Ruthie's Inner yeah. July's Mile High. Yeah. Every night an exorcism where another demon was put to rest where you were free to be real and be downright nasty. You could show you stuff to your weapon, sweat the rum boogie, Christie's grill, the Palladium Club, and all the nameless hidden around the clock, juke joints, and the blues came down like rain. I said, it fell down on everything. It fell down on Oakley where blues was king, and then they came. I said, they came, they came and knocked down the cafes, they tore up Seventh Street, they came and closed the clubs, they promised jobs and schools to uplift and save, but they took the hood and left the wasteland full of restless spirits. Ghosts, 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 ghosts running loose, plenty of reasons to send the lose. But when everyone else goes to sleep, you can still hear them. J.C. Burris, Donnie Ivory, Z.C. Hill, Mr. B. Johnny Waters, hear them, hear them, hear them singing there. Sounds written all over every building that seeps up out of the ground. You walk on and it's yours. Little Johnny Taylor, Johnny Hawks, Percy Mayfield, listen, listen. 
This is they tried to free you. They tried to hear you with their blues so strong. Even Willie Bobo was saying they'll go back to Georgia. Buddy Ace, Cool Papa Sandra, Brownie McGee, Low Force will they'll always be here. They refuse to disappear. Nothing can stop the gentrifiers care block at the same folks that dance from the blues scene into the mambo sessions and back again at the California Hotel now around the Dorsey's locker. Blues will sweet Jimmy's and the Fifth Amendment, the same people and their children that bring it in anew. Queen Ida came to stepping out the bayou, leaving the Zyna Co parade and Sugar Pie to Santo and John Lee Hook and Never Grow. They still ride on top of our tone and pole. There's Lady Bianca and Jesse James, E.C. Scott and Al Vaughn, Sister Monica, Bobby Webb and Gwen Avery, Little Frankie Lee and Billy Dunn, Wiley Trash, Faye Carroll, Willie G, Frankie Kelly, Johnny Tauber and Ronnie Stewart, leading the caravan of all stars into the morning. It's in the air we breathe. I say it keeps on coming. It just keeps on coming and 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 nothing and nobody can stop it. Other folks can keep that big head stuff way up in the clouds when the war comes back down to earth. The prize is ours and it's our jewel and it's still coming down on town blue. You know, a lot of us uh, got a lot to be angry about and um, I think that especially people of color, any person that hasn't been angry, something wrong with them at one point or another. But the reason to fight the reason to fight is not because of that anger, because when we're angry, then we kind of uh, we kind of defeat our purpose. The reason to fight is for love, because the part of you that's living in me, that's why I fight. For those brothers, there's a whole bunch of brothers in this room and a couple of sisters who I've seen go through hell, including myself, I went through it. Be, you know, it was not pretty when you're out there doing the stuff you have to do. Because staying, staying loaded is a lot of work. Folks say, oh, it takes too much, it's too much work to stay clean. It's the biggest lie they ever told. The biggest lie they ever told. It takes too much work to stay loaded. It takes too much work to keep up all the lies and the scandalous stuff that we have to do to keep it going, you know? And so, I really love you guys. I mean, uh, my prize baby is the host of this thing. I, I, I hope I didn't blow your cool over there. Yeah. He's always good in his suit looking like Reverend over here. He's one of my prize students, Frank. Um, and there's a couple others, I mean, and I, I'm not knocking anybody else. I mean, I must look like Vampire's grandmama when I was out there, you know? And, and then we look like we look now. I get high just looking at you. You just smile. This birthday boy, look at that smile. Look at how beautiful you look. You know, that's what I fight for. When they kill our children, I don't believe in violence, but you mess with the babies. I got four grandsons, three great-grandsons, and a great-granddaughter, and you mess with one of the babies. I forget that I don't believe in violence. <laughs> That's what I fight for. I fight for to bring the West Oakland. I grew up in Spanish Harlem. It's the same thing they did the West Oakland, they did there. They did the Fillmore. They're gonna do whatever they can. If you don't watch your backs, they will do it. So this is a love poem to you. To you, to me, and what have you. Because I think the strongest reason to fight is that love. You know, forget the anger. You know, don't let the anger eat us up. Because all, all we do, we get, we get an ulcer and wind up spending all our money. <laughs> To get rid of the ulcer that anger causes when we have a clear head, we might be able to fight this craziness and turn it around so they stop killing our babies. You know. Anyway, so this is a love song for lovable people. I dedicate it to each one of you in this room because you are so fine. It's just looking good. I fight so hard because I love and respect the earth, sacred mother of us all, holy loving mother raped in the name of civilization by those who are uncivilized loveless, unlovable, and in their ugliness, their unnaturalness, they are jealous of your natural beauty. Yeah. I fight so hard because I love, respect, even the air I breathe, the water I drink, the air and water we all need to love, to, to live, and, and you know, their unending greed is both blind and stupid, and their wisdom is loveless. I, I fight so hard because I love, respect children, Happy, proud, free, healthy children, children that dance, sing, and play naked under the heavens. The number one reason for our sweat, our love, our tears, our smiles, all our children, our tomorrows, our forevers, our beautiful babies forced into old age and age six. They tried so hard to turn our tomorrows into our enemies, put us at each other's throats so that they might have company in their lovelessness. I fight to win back my babies, my soul, my love, my hopes, my tomorrows, because I love. I fight so hard because I love, respect our men, 
My, my, my sons, my father, my brothers, Dr. Feelgood, my friend, you, child of my belly, you, son of my love, you are the physical part of me, I, daughter of your warm sperm, born of your love, your seed, you are the happiness, the strength they tried to castrate, they who would even castrate the sunshine and love, you are their greatest fear, because it is so easy to love you and they are loveless. I say, I fight so hard because I love respect all women. Women, my sister, mother of my mother, Kaniyosa Preciosa, my lover, queen of midnight, daughter of moonlight, love child, you, mirror of myself, strong, gentle, cactus lady, lover, forced to turn fighter, queen, forced to turn whore in order for us to survive. Survive their sickness, their lovelessness, they are jealous of your strength, your laughter, because you are so lovable and they are so loveless. I, created by an act of love, only made possible by my wise, sensitive, strong, gentle, sensual, proud, loving, and lovable ancestors. I fight so hard because I respect love, because I love respect you, us, I, you, because it is natural to love, because it is naturally respectful to love nature and our natural nature that we love to love each other. I fight so hard because I love, I, I live for your love, to preserve, protect, and defend all love among loveless people because I love needing you, my flesh, my blood, my people, and because you all love it, it is impossible to do anything but love you, live and die to love you, me, all of us, loving you, and loving us, loving us to live and dying to love you. I fight so hard because I love, I love you, because I, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love each and every one of you. California, for those of you who don't know, is the runaway state because if you can get declared an emancipated minor and you have residence in California, then you're an emancipated minor everywhere. And so I did, that's what I did. And because at, when I was 15 going on 16, I looked like I was about 12, I wound up working as a farm worker for a little while. There was a four system of Chavez, and he used to spray the fields when we were in them. I have a thing that's called MS. MS needs a trigger. That spray. A lot of folks that were in those fields wind up with uh, some of the MS, Hajimoto's disease, lupus, or what have you. Then all of you in this room, another thing that nobody should have, and if you're young enough that your teeth can stand it, you should get it taken out immediately, mercury. Mercury is a deadly poison. There's no waste dump in the planet that will accept it. And we have a mouthful of it just because they got so much of it, they don't know what to do with it. Okay, so I, that's my little homework assignment for folks who are young enough. If you're older, old as me, you forget it. Your teeth will fall apart you try to take it out. So that's how I got my little gift here. So for those folks who want to know about MS and what it does and what it means to have to, a person who is an athlete or what have you and loves the dance, um, to wind up in a place like this, a folks say, well, what are you going to stop? I can't. This poem is called This Is Ain't Quitting, or Life Dodging the Margin of Acceptable Risk. An acceptable risk is that period or that point where they develop all these wonder drugs and what have you, right. and they work for a certain percentage of people, the percentage they don't work for, that's the acceptable risk. I live there. Okay. Been living my life on borrowed time. Go to sleep exhausted, and I still wake up feeling tired, beat up, and almost knocked down from doing the MS shuffle. Got tossed around, tricked, caught up, and sucked into what could be my own demise, disguised by an innocent looking smile on the iron jaws of science. Many fool knows that science never lies. But one taste of truth forced me to look at that toxic delusion and blam! I opened my mouth and saw the fake beauty of all that mercury staring back at me. Sitting there, just as cold and bold as it wanted to be, an enemy had moved in and made itself at home in my teeth. I was caught and trapped by a medical fantasy, a Venus tri trap, and now all their pretty breakfasts really got a hold on me. Even after all my shucking and jiving and ducking and denying and trying to make every kind of outlandish bargain with God, there's still no place I can hide. Because I'm still waking up tired, and I still find myself riding in the margin of their acceptable risk. Hey, acceptable? By whose definition? Marginal? Command or what? Me, are they really talking about me? Not this sister? Oh, it can't be. Not me, but who? Watch your back because there's always some mad scientist cooking up some new strange brew and is causing a dude and he's Dr. Strange Love, he wants to try it all out on you. Oh no, can't be. Not here in the land of the free, that kind of stuff just doesn't happen today, but dodging the margin is acceptable to who? 
When science is God, the margin gets hazy. It's a racket, a scam, a multi-million dollar game. The whole concept is inhumane. It's mad. It's completely insane. It's crazy. The margin of acceptable risk is anywhere the powers want it to be. And it's where, wherever they want it to be. And they want it everywhere. There's a profit to be made. It's all about money, 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 all the way to the grave. Like the so-called benevolent syphilis experiment in Tuskegee. Yeah. Only this time their experiment is me. And this is movable and as obscene as a corporate marriage morality and as clean as the untested miracle of the estrogen dreams. As unasked for and unnecessary as the cruel gift of age and orange and as evil as dumping on unsuspected farm workers sitting like ducks stuck getting sprayed picking crops. This is a nightmare in real time and unfortunately this time it's my time. The margin is a very profitable lies as sick as sick and go. Look at me, I'm living proof. All this drama ain't no joke. It's anything the scientific community claims it to be, and it's whatever they claim it to be. And as long as it's done for their financial gain and the of their progress, and the only real casualties are you, our neighbors and friends, and me, seems to be the margin of acceptable risk is whatever they can get away with, and they get away with it all the time. So here I be. Still tired, almost whipped, caught up and all wrapped up, locked up in the temple of some invisible madman's technology. Just one more insignificant waste of their corporate space. Another loudmouth, expendable artist, a marginal target sitting in the center of their bullseye. But I refuse to go out living my life like some sacrificial lamb in the margin of their acceptable risk. Just another new age receptacle, a toxic waste dump on they, their legs hidden away in some unethical but scientifically acceptable deception. I don't know what they've been smoking, but my life ain't no joke, and as long as there's one of us strong enough to write this poem, I'm gonna be a thorn in all their self-righteousness. This sister wasn't born to quit, and even though I may still wake up tired, MS may steal some of my fire, I plan to live my life right up to the day that I die, and I know MS may eventually get the best of me, but until the White Citizens Council unanimously elects a blue black man imperial grand dragon with a blue black the margin of acceptable risk will continue to be completely unacceptable. Just hit me, ain't this Black History Month or something? Yes, it is. 